Hi everyone, welcome back to our another session at the Martello Labs and the IPDAC 2 and 2UD. Today I'm going to show you uh, a couple of different methods of programming the unit. We're going to, in this session, use a program called the IPDAC Configurator, which you can download from www.firelight.com under Communicators section. So the very first thing that I recommend to everyone is that you default the unit and you can do that by the means of this little uh, jumper which I hope you can see here first of all I'm going to turn power off to the unit so you see the LED, power LED here just went out and then I'm going to take that jumper and right here you'll see uh, two little pins, brass pins, I'm going to short those two with this jumper now in the operating mode you want to leave it off uh, hanging on just one of those pins. Alright, here we go. So I'm going to turn power on and then watch these LEDs right here. So we're going to see one, two, I'm going to pull the jumper, and three. And when you see that third burst, that means that the unit is defaulted. So, we've got a clean slate to work with. We're now going to move over to our programming software. Now I'm connected up through my network I have a wireless laptop hooked to a wireless router and that router um, is connected via this Ethernet um, to the IP DAT. So that's how I've established my network. I also have a test receiver on this network so I can make everything play nice together. So I'm going to uh, show you first this IP DAT configurator software so I'm going to bring that up. Now what's neat about this uh, software it has a little browser built in here. It's called the IPDAC browser, which allows you to um, you just click on that and you can uh, scan, and it will find any unit that is on your network because it's essentially looking for the MAC address. Every MAC address uh, has the name of the manufacturer in the very first part of the address, so that's how it knows how to do that. Well, it found this one on uh, my subnetwork, which is 10.10.10.10, so I'm going to go ahead and connect to that. And you can see uh, I've come up now, and all of the stuff in red needs to be taken care of. And that is data that's going to be provided to you by your central station. If you are going to be installing this on what's called a... Oops, let me shut my net panel down here. There we go. Um, if you're going to be installing this on a network that has an IT personnel group and, uh, um, you know, they, they use static ad addresses, then what you're going to do is fill in the green numbers, um, the green fields here with the information that they provide you. In that case, you're going to remove the check mark here, uh, which is to enable the DHCP client. And then you're going to fill in whatever information they assign you for this particular unit. That would be its IP address, its mask, and what gateway it needs to use to get to the outside world. Because it's important that the communication starts with the IP DACT as it goes out through the firewall. It is now a trusted client so that the receiver can come back in and acknowledge the signals to the, uh, to the unit. Remember that the communications are bidirectional. So I'm going to assign uh, account 155 to this. I'm going to put in the address of my receiver, which is 192.168.1.50. I'm going to leave the backup uh, alarm uh, out of here. First of all, I don't have a backup running. And if I did, um, it would automatically fill in anyway, because it does that from something called a configuration pattern, which you don't need to know about. So I do know that my UDP port is 8080. Okay. Now, the other thing I'll point out here, you'll notice this auto-registration password. Uh, if you, you will be given a, a registration password, which allows the unit to be configured on your bench. You can take it to the field turn it on and that should automatically register so you can give it to a technician who doesn't need a laptop in that case all they do is hook up the wires and away they go well anyway I've got that in there so I'm gonna go ahead and configure that now the configure basically goes in and it puts all the parameters into flash memory and then what it will do is, is it says restarting the IP DAC and what that means is it is like rebooting your computer so it puts all of the information 
into flash memory and saves it like in the registry when you start up your computer. The next thing that will come up, if you're not auto-registering, it'll say, do you want to register the IP DAC? So in that case, I'm going to say, in this case, I'm going to say yes. And I know that my auto-registration password is 11114 four ones. And I'm going to click on register. Now, you notice, please contact your central station to obtain a valid registration password. So that's how these are controlled from central station to central station. And there you go, IP DAC registered successfully. We are good to go. So that's it on using the IPDAC configurator. In the next session, uh, you can come back and you'll find one on how to use um, a serial terminal emulator, which is even more interesting because you can, you can do a lot more in-depth troubleshooting with it. So this is quick and easy, so I recommend this. If, if you don't need to do any troubleshooting, just want to get it up and running, this is the way to do it. Thanks. Have a great day. See you next time.